Greetings and salutations, everybody. I'm Simone Malone, your radio feel good man. We're live out of Studio 236 with my special guest. We just got off my national R&B show, and now we here where you're watching us on YouTube and Facebook. Gregory R. Benjamin, welcome to Studio 236. You were just on my radio show. Had a great time, right? Oh man, let me tell you, you're the best. I'll try. Right? I'll try. <laughs> I, you know, I, I did not anticipate what I encountered, man. Really? This was definitely an awesome experience. Wonderful. You're an excellent host. Thank you. My you pleasure. You make it really like easy. You know, it's like uh, when you're riding a bike for the first time. Yes. Initially, there was a train on wheels, but right. pretty soon they come off. That's right. That's right. You know? And let me say congratulations. Thanks for your lovely wife, uh, Lady Adrian, being here. Uh, congratulations on your anniversary you just celebrated mm -hmm. and uh, you have an amazing wife she does an amazing uh, shea butter and soap guys that's why skin looks so good thank you lady Adrian but anyhow uh, congratulations on your anniversary let's talk a little bit about your life um, you have uh, been a, uh, a man in a community that has made a difference and still making a difference talk a little about you're from Southwest Philadelphia you are a block captain, you're uh, a ward leader, and you work for Philadelphia Corporation of Agent as an investigator. Your your father, you are a pa uh, uh, I'm not to say pastor, but you are a minister at Christian Compassion Church. All of those under one umbrella, but most of all, you love God and you know God. Amen. Let's talk a little bit about that. Amen. Well, <clears throat> well, it's awesome when you get an opportunity to reflect back over your life, remember childhood and what that was like, and how your childhood influenced your, your, your it, you, when you became an adult. Sure. You know, um, as a young person, you know, I did not like the violence. I did not like uh, some of the stuff that I actually grew up around. Mm -hmm. but I felt, and you know, it was nothing I could do about it at that time. You know, and at that time when you started talking about, well, we shouldn't be doing this and that, people would look at you like you're soft. And so, you know, you had to... Uh, even though you didn't know it at that time, you just couldn't let it change mm -hmm. you. Whatever was going on outside of you, mm -hmm. you couldn't let that change what was inside you. And uh, having the kind of parents I had, you know, mom met the Lord at a very early age. And it wasn't that I became this uh, uh, evangelist at, at a young age, but what it did do, I always had this respect for God. So even as a young person, when I did confess Jesus Christ, when I did get uh, baptized, I did always wrote God's name in caps. Mm. You know, never no big G, little O, and little D. It's always been all caps because he's all God like that. Um, from that experience up until you know getting older. The other thing that I always wanted to be wanted to be committed to, I always wanted to reflect my father. Mm -hmm. My father was a good husband. Mm -hmm. He was a provider. Um, my mother, you know, she really um, took care of the family. She made sure we ate. She did different things that, you know, are not really practiced much today. Um, I was blessed in being able to run into a woman who um, not only loved the Lord, but also had a desire to have a family. And we have a blended family, you know, so that makes it even uh, more awesome because all my children are my children. Um, when I fed one, I fed all, mm -hmm. you know. It was never a situation where I basically, um, now did I make some errors in growing up? Yes, I did, you know, raising my children. But I don't know if there's anything called the perfect parent. Right. But I do know that I was as fair a parent as I could be. And I think Adrian and I, you know, did a pretty good job with that. Because I had been in politics when I was much younger, mm -hmm. when I was like in my early 20s and so forth. And what 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 happened was I was drugging too much. Mm. I was getting high, you know, I used to like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it so much that it was more of a problem sure. than it was a, a relaxation. Long story, you know, again, so I was doing the politics. Yes. Then, hanging out. Seeing people that I never thought was doing what they were doing when they were doing it. And I met Adrian. And uh, having already had children, it made it so that, again, I wanted to be like my dad. I wanted to be as accountable, responsible. God knew the desires of my heart. So what he did was he pulled me out of the whole environment. No politics. I didn't do anything politically for almost 20 years. I stayed out, I raised my children, I went to work every day, and that became, you know, 
the Lord definitely built me up in mm -hmm. terms of my relationship with Him. And if I got a second, I want to give you a little brief. A sure, little brief, go ahead. You know, um, I always remember uh, about how God uh, brought me back into the fold. You know, there's a story about the one sheep. He'll go get it. You know, and leave the other yeah, ninety-nine. Right. That's right. Well, I was out there. You know, not 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 committing crime. But again, driving so bad, you know. This woman over here would come home because we, you know, we were. She would tell me, "Oh, I just can't live like this." Mm. And I'd be like, "Hey, she coming with my mother-in-law." They had just come from church. We was they was going to service over at a church called Beulah Baptist Church I remember. under Timothy, uh, Pastor Timothy Ruffin. Yes. And they was getting on my nerves. I mean, I just got <laughs> finished getting on. Here they come with some other stuff. Long story short, I said, "I'm going down to church." And I'm gonna get my wife out of there. We're gonna get back home, keep the house like it was before she started going there. I messed around, started messing with Pastor Pastor Ruffin. My goodness. Asking him, like, why ain't you, you know, what you think about your wife not being home? Right, right, right. Right. And one day he called me a dummy. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he he didn't know me, know me like that. But I guess with the questions I was asking, I was interrupting his his teaching. And then one day he said he called me a dummy. And I said, dang, I ain't like that. So I went outside and I had a piece of joint in there. You know what joint is. Of piece course. Of weed. <laughs> and I'm sitting up there and I'm sitting in the car puffing on it. And I said, I'm going back in there. And I put, I didn't have no, you know, cologne like I'm mm -hmm. now. I had oil. So I brought myself down with oil. Could I go back in the church? And that's when God got, straight, got, got me straight. Mm. Because from the day I went back in that church, I never had a question that I was able to ask Pastor Ruffin anymore that was a distraction to what he was trying to teach the people. So I always say that God used Adrian yes. as the bait to get me back in church. And once I got in there, I rededicated my life to the Lord. And that's when I got, you know, I, I left the politics. And I wasn't doing the politics. It was strictly about raising my children. And so that, and then coming back to Southwest Philly about another 20 years ago. Sure. Um, I just, uh, God just had a, a different man. You know, I was doing, you know, I, I was more committed to him. I wasn't involved in the mm -hmm. politics. And the way I got back in it, um, when I came back, my mother had asked Adrian and I, would we take her house? They wanted to go back. They wanted to move to South Carolina. Sure. We came back to Springfield Avenue. It was, and I didn't really know how severe it was, but it was littered with prostitution wow. and four drug houses. And I never forget because I said that you know what, the only thing that was holding me back, I wanted to go to South Carolina, yeah, and live. And Adrian wanted to live here. Okay. And I'm like, wow, you know. So one night I'm looking out there, I see the prostitutes and everything, and I see the people going to drug houses, and then the Lord dropped Zechariah chapter eight. Verses 16 to 17 in my spirit. That scripture gave me my marching orders that I had to get out there and that what was going on then. Right. And not scare people. Or, I used to have Bible study with the prostitutes. Wow. I used to feed them. You know, I used to go into drug houses. I, I, I even went to uh, my, my, my good friend, uh, you know, they, the, uh, the family, the Thompson family, they, they knew my dad and all that. I used to go in their home and they had like 30, 40 people in there. They, these are the people that was coming off the street. Unbelievable. And we would share a word with yeah. them. They would be fed. And that was the foundation of how I started back in the community. Because I, you know, I never got tight, tight with the elected officials. Mm -hmm. I always did what God allowed me to do. Sure. And that's what ultimately led to me and you having this conversation right now. Amazing story. So here you are, you're a block captain, presently your uh, 51st ward leader. Yes, sir. And uh, that involves so much in the community. And you're involved, you know, being an uh, investigator for PCA. And you're a minister at Christian Compassion, amazing church and pastor. Go ahead and shout your pastor out. My pastor's name is Pastor W. Lonnie Herndon. Awesome teacher, awesome preacher. But he's also helping us to build up in our relationship with the Lord. Yeah. He holds us accountable. And don't let him ask you to do something and then you don't do it. Yeah. Because he'll get a little upset. Yeah. So he wants to see what the Lord has blessed him with to invest in us. Yes. So that we can begin to show the fruit. We are the fruit of his labor. Yes. And so we go out and we do additional fruit 
preparation. Yes. And so I'm grateful for Pastor Aaron and I'm grateful for Pastor uh, Terry Lynn and Pastor Abrams and you know, I'm again. If I start calling out names, we're gonna be here till yeah. tomorrow. You know? And you're quite involved in your church, and we thank God for that. I know you do a lot with the men of the church. You sometimes on a prayer thing with the men as well. Mm -hmm. But recently, ladies and gentlemen, he was recognized. You know, the Bible talks about that the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. But this man is making a difference. I want you to tell people. Hold up that a beautiful word. And we salute and we honor him. We're going to get closer with that. Let me hold this preciously, First Lady over there. Look at that. Congratulations. Tell them what this says on this. Gregory R., with our greatest appreciation, we hereby present Gregory R. Benjamin this award in recognition of the ongoing commitment and dedicated service as ward leader to the 51st Ward, June 2024. Ongoing commitment. That's what we're talking about. Isn't that beautiful, folks? Congratulations. I wanted him to bring this to the studio and share this. Uh, that's going to go up on, I know, in his office at, at home <laughs> so uh, people can see that. That's, that's really well-deserved, man. You're, you're doing a lot of work. I, I see your work on social media. I see you out there, community. Um, I said, how, how is he doing all of this and, and still be a husband and be a father? Um, you know, still work with PCA, even doing after-hour work. Amazing. What do you want to share to the people as we wrap up? As we, this is a very important year for us mm -hmm. as we elect a new president of the United States. Um, people, thoughts and feelings are all over the place. Mm -hmm. I still don't know what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. but I'm remaining prayerful. Mm -hmm. Speaking to that camera and encourage our people about why it's important to vote, why this is such a critical time in our lives. I think um, we have to be better at examining people. We need to do better examinations. We have to do better interviews because we have to understand that we are the employers of these individuals called representatives or elected officials. And for that, for that reason, we can't rush to judgment on how we make our decisions about who we will support who will get our vote because you need to examine the situation very closely. Don't just do everything with your heart. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to really commit your head mm -hmm. to the uh, process of learning about all the individuals. Um, when we talk about people past and what they've done and things like that, we have to remember, especially if you're a Christian or if you're a God-fearing person, mm -hmm. you have to remember that in such with some of you. You too have had some treacherous, I know I have, mm -hmm. some messy backgrounds, you know. And I've done some things that I'm not proud of. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that there's some people out there listening to this uh, program right now who also have this, a similar history. We can't keep holding people to their history. We have to find out what are they doing and what's relevant for us as a people because our communities are, it looks like, you know, you're talking about sending money to Ukraine. You better send some money to Southwest <laughs> exactly. You better send some money. So do we need people, they need home improvement. Right. They need, so, and for our older adults, we need more attention on their social security benefits. Mm -hmm. People need more financial support. So I would just say in your planning for who you will vote for, again, look at your conditions that you're actually living in. Don't go by what somebody's telling you on the news or somewhere that don't even live around you. But listen to the people, listen to your conditions, and take your time. If you don't know, then look for where your ward leaders are. Mm -hmm. I'm a ward leader, mm -hmm. I'm, but I'm not your regular ward leader. I'm a different kind of ward leader because I'm community engaged. I'm a community activist. We done a, we've done some major things in our community that changes the whole trajectory of what a war leader actually looks like. So, if you're going to be making a vote in November, don't just go by what this person is telling you or that. Look, examine your war leader. Make sure he or she is doing the work, and find your grassroots people because they they've gone through a lot of what we're going through. Yeah. 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Gregory R. Benjamin. Give your contact information real quick. Again, Gregory R. Benjamin. My phone number is 267-254-9972. Again, that's 267-254-9962. And my email address is greben5030 at comcast.net. Again, G is in Gregory, R is in Richard, E is in Edward, B is in Benjamin, E is in Edward, N as in Nancy, 5030 at comcast.net. And give that number again. We just want to make sure that they have that mic. Go ahead. Again, that's 267 mm -hmm. 254 And may I say one more thing? Sure, go ahead. You are one of the best hosts I've ever had a chance to really? see. Oh, man. You Your wife didn't put you up to that? Hey, listen. I've, I've, you Thank know, you I've, so much. I've had an opportunity yes, to sir. be on some shows. And not that they weren't good also. Absolutely. I appreciate but that. But what I'm saying is, you know, you make it easy. Thank you. Amen? Thank you. God bless you. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, my colleague, Gregory R. Benjamin, please support what he's doing. Let's make a difference. Um, he just gave you his contact information. You can find him on social media. He's very lively and doing so much out there. Um, and let's remain prayerful uh, because there are better days for us. Good days are ahead of us. We have to believe that. But the difference is with you. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. Make sure you contact me. My information is going to scroll there across the screen. Feelgoodman1 at yahoo.com, 215-224-4297. If you want to be here at the home of Studio 236 that I own and operate, for an interview, let's talk about it. Give me a call, 215-224-4297. What's your final word? Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Awesome. Let's weave it, everybody. See you all. Take care. Enjoy the remainder of your summer. Bye-bye.